Hi guys, Darren from MRT here. Probably notice I haven't uh, uploaded any content the last past six weeks, video-wise anyway. Been away on a family trip, um, camping around uh, the middle of Australia. We had a lovely time, but now without further ado, I want to get back to getting into some content. So this latest video is going to be on Train Controllers Smart Hand. So without further ado, let's get into this. If you're a first time viewer, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming videos and make sure you like and share. Also follow us on Facebook and please have a look at my new website www.modelrailroadtechniques.com Okay, so the first thing we need to do to activate Smart Hand is download it. So I won't actually go into the ins and outs of downloading it because I think we all know how to do this, but you go into free world software and you download it from that location there then what you get from that is when you okay on my railway I use smart hand quite significantly I access as I've explained in other videos all these panels so I don't have physical control panels anymore I actually use smart hand so it's really handy for all my operators because it's like a soft panel that is click of the mouse um, no different as you would off the main panel so how do we get into smart hand manager so I've got it set up the top there so the first thing we need to do is actually connect it to the any given device so what I'll do I'll show you it connecting within the computer and then I'll bring up a an insert of a, a mobile phone or a tablet on how you do it there so if you want to have a look at the the connection parameters for the mobile is via the web web server here so all of my connections at this point in time are all wireless and I haven't had any issues with it in the train room I do have a hot spot because I've got quite a large train room uh, with a few little nooks and crannies so as I said I haven't had any dropping out of smart hand at this point in time um, I just use old PCs to to run it so that is linking wirelessly to this system to access it so what you need to do is your URL here you need to type into a fresh web server and mine's already up there then you'll come up with this so you can see this is just a, a mirror image of what we've got we've got we can as I said we can either control the physical locomotive from this point so obviously this is showing a lot larger it would be say than on a mobile phone because the screen is bigger so the bigger the screen obviously the, the better so what you can do is as I said you can go and control your locomotives so you've got all your, your icons down the side here so I can say go into that locomotive and you push OK down the bottom. Then it's just a matter of incrementing it up or you can get your mouse on it or your finger I should say if it's a, for a smartphone or a tablet or a stylus and away you go and obviously back down. So also you can control all your, your functions as you would on an, any other controller so lighting, sound, horns, couplers and the like. I don't actually control my trains via this. I find I still like it, and also that of my my operators. We still like the physical positive feedback of a controller in your hand. So I use a, a Roco controller with a with a speed knob and the like. But it is an option if people want to do it. To do it quite cheaply. You can have a mate come over if you don't have enough controllers. You can get you can link them in on the um, on the switchboard. Now, just something just on the connection. The device that you're running so in my case my PCs which are what well, I'm going to call remote PCs as my switchboards they need to be connected to the same wireless connection or Ethernet connection that the main computer is connected to because obviously it needs to be able to talk so the functionality of smart hands quite good um, as I've explained in previous videos you can still control all my all my schedules my train movements and the like Okay, so what I've got going here, um, I'll bring up a little little window here somewhere uh, on the screen and I'll show you. So currently where I'm circling here, this is the main switchboard within train controller. So what I'll do, I'll control, just to show you that it does have positive feedback regarding the system. So a lot of people have asked, you know, does it feedback the, the, the states, the your switches or your points? So. We'll go up to this number 210 here and just watch the little blue line go up and down. So I'm currently across on Smart Hand now. I'll insert there and you'll see it flick up and down there. 
So that's a, obviously a nice little feature because there's some other products out there that don't do this. So what else can you do? So within Smart Hand, you, you pretty well got the same functionality as the main switchboard. However, um, you can't move locomotives around like this. Um, for whatever reason, you might want to do this if you know you, you route it wrong wrongly or the, the system has an error and it picks it up. So what I've got to do, this this locomotive here, I'll go over on Smart Hand. All these little arrows, I've got little routes set up, so it's a it's a bit of a occlusion avoidance thing for when I'm shunting uh, this Nancy station here. So I'm going to go up to this locomotive here. So what I'm going to do, I'll go across to Smart Hand, and I will set that route. So you can see how it's got now yellow lines. So I've basically what I've done, I've just gone and pressed this button here. So I just it's a nice little feature. It just keeps feeding information back to the system. So if the, if you have a dispatcher, they can look in real time what um, other operators are doing within the system. So you're a runner of train controller, and the very logical question is, why do you think you need Smart Hand? Well, you can imagine on a large layout such as mine, just an area like this, to actually build a control panel and have wiring for every one of these switches and if you want feedback with lighting via other occupancy detection on the switchboard you would have to have dozens hundreds of wires probably more than likely so I just think it's just a nice neat way of having these mimic boards as I call them yes not everyone likes having it via what I call a soft switchboard on the on the on the PC however I just think it's a, a really a really neat way of doing it as I said I don't really control the trains via it I still like I still like the old school way of controlling trains with a, a physical controller but hey there's people out there that like the soft controller for their trains but they like having a physical control panel I'm just uh, walking you through so what else can we do within train controller Sorry, what can we do within Smart Hand Manager? So we'll just bring up the uh, the main interface. So, so as I said, a lot of this stuff I I sort of don't use, but so you, you, there is a way of customizing your setup. So what you can actually do, you can we'll just run down here. I won't go through them all because they're pretty self-explanatory. So. The general, what the general tab does, it looks at all the icons down the side along the top. So what I'll do, I'll go back into my switchboard and I'll bring it up down the bottom for you. So that's pretty well, it's all this stuff here. So if you go up and down, you can make them bigger, you can make them larger. So depending on the, the size of, of your screen, the screen you're looking at there is a, a laptop screen. That's how one of the ways you can control it. So you can make it have the clock up the top right hand corner. Okay, so the train view. Um, if you use the train, you can actually make the trains bigger and smaller. Um, I normally just leave everything at 100% now. Depending on the uh, how good your computer screen is, you can actually you can customize the switchboard view. So you can see it right now. So here's what we got here. So we can actually customize it further. So within Train Control proper, you can customize your main switchboards, but then you can control it further. So you can do the symbol sizes, the background color, the track color. and the text and the like. So then you can go into the highlighting of what color you want the routes. You can have turnout statuses. Uh, it's a myriad of things you can do uh, with it to further customize it to suit the individual device. So the block one, I tend to like a little bit and it can be a little bit buggy for some reason. This it, For some reason, it'll show that um, sometimes these get ticked off for some reason. I'm not quite sure why it does it. But so what you can do, 
you can turn off all the block names. Um, I still like the block names because they're sort of handy for a reference to, to show you how or what blocks things are going to. So if you're talking to other operators, you can speak the same language. So what I'll, I'll do, I'll show you a quick how you just quickly show the color. So right now, we got a gray color. So I'll, I'll, I'll insert down here somewhere if I've got room um, what the actual screen looks like. So what you do, you go the background color, and let's make it something really bold so it's easy to see. Obviously, I would, personally, I wouldn't go to black, but that's just me. So when you do that, you go back to OK, then a the system update. And then you need to, back on your main system up here, you go apply to all. So what that'll do, and you can now see how on the insert, that obviously looks terrible because I've got the grids up, but um, you can see how that's gone black. So what we'll do, we'll go back to train view here, back to switchboard view, background color, and for some reason I never did that, but we'll put that white. And you'll see it's back to, to the normal color. So there you can see. So you sort of play around with it a little bit more. Um, it's up to you whether you want the grid lines there. That's obviously within this screen gets a little bit over overwhelming within the eye. So that's probably something I would look at playing around with a little bit more. And on my my proper computer when I'm out there, I've actually done that to make them look better for the screen. So another fun little thing I've found is this little messaging system. So you can go you can actually message between all the systems so so I can go into this and go hi dispatcher or anything else I don't quite know what you do this for but it's a fun little thing that I've used on my my operators I like to keep my my operating sessions a little bit uh, fun and sort of laid back so and then what you do you go apply all and then goes hi dispatcher as I said it's probably not something you I would use a lot of purely because that's what it does to the screen so if someone's in the middle of something that probably wouldn't be all that advised advisable so to actually get that screen to get it back to their main screen that is go okay and it goes back so as I don't I'm not quite sure what you'd use that for but I've thrown it in every now and again to my dispatchers just to keep them on their toes so to speak so you probably could use it. Um, I'm not sure how many characters that it'll take. So this classic signal, um, you can obviously select which which country of, well, European anyway. You can go to Fault or Custom and set your own up. You can go and play around and make those up. So so I don't actually use, use this function on mine, so I don't know much about it. I've seen other users use it, and it's basically that's the aspect it gives, and then they can... The, the operator can work out what it is. I've got our semaphore signals on my layout, so mine will come up on my switchboard. Okay, the, the privilege is probably another interesting one. Now looking, I, I tick them all. So you can dictate or give privilege to the the controller. The, obviously this here is the, the main switchboard. So the big ones are allow emergency stop. So you want someone to have an emergency stop if needs be. Um, another big one for mine, may control train without a schedule because I, within train controller, will use, I do shunt that are outside of scheduling. So you can actually use that. So I just tick them all. You can have a bit of a play around with that and try what all the rest of them are. I just leave them all ticked. But there's some guys and girls out there that uh, sort of clamp down a lot more on this. So the favourites refers to so the re favorites refers to what you can access so I'll bring up down the bottom left hand side again the schedule one so I don't access it this way because I've got physical extended accessories on my so I'll start all my scheduling with these buttons here but you can actually go into the schedule and start the schedule which is kind of cool so that's uh, the end of the video at this point in time so thanks for watching
and I'll see you next time. Hi, Darren from MRT here. Just also advising you of set up a, a Patreon page. So what I'm looking at doing is raising a few funds to get a better equipment, better lighting and the like. So any dollar that you are able to pledge, that'd be fantastic. It's just going to go straight back into the channel. It's going to give me the opportunity to get out more content, better content um, for you, the viewers. So what I'm going to look at doing, so it's only a few dollars a month, if that. So between $1 and $2 at this point in time, I'll look at doing a, a model Roro Technique sticker that I'll send out to you. And I'll definitely give a, a shout out to every patron, no matter the amount of money they are to pledge. And if they wish to plug their own layout or groups or Facebook pages or Instagram, I'll do that on my video as well. So for $3 and above, I'll make up some handmade static grass tufts and send them out. And as I get uh, more patrons coming along, I will develop this even more. So probably $5 or more, there'll be, be more of an incentive. So I don't really like having to ask uh, in this sort of way, but it sort of becomes almost a necessity. Uh, this channel so far is done in my own time, obviously, on a mobile phone with some pretty cruddy microphones. So I'd like to start getting some money together to upgrade all that type of stuff for a better experience for you as the as the audience. All you need to do is type in Model Roro Techniques in patreon.com and become a patron and that'd be really, really great. So I will see you on the next videos. So thanks a lot and see you next time. Also, I'd like to give a, a massive shout out to the, the Wiley boys, Brett and Todd Wiley from HO Scale Customs. They run a really, really cool podcast that can be accessed via iTunes and various other media and off their website, which is www.hoscalecustoms.com. So this is the, the website here. So they're really into ultra, ultra detailing. Their, their skills with these lads is just phenomenal. So I love watching the, the banter between, it's a father and son duo, Brett and, and Todd. So I really like watching it. Uh, they can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, they do a few YouTube channels as well, and Pinterest, and a few other other social media. So that's uh, HO Scale Customs. Really, really, really good listen uh, regarding their their podcast. They're they're, they're hilarious. The, the way they 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 carry and get stuck into each other. It's a really lovely relationship between father and son. Okay, guys, make sure you make comment below. This Make sure you click that little bell icon to be advised of upcoming videos. Give it a thumbs up. Share with all your mates and all that other good stuff. Make sure you go to my website, www.modelrailroadtechniques.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.